<laughs> Greetings, everyone! It is I, Megamind, bringing you part four of the Grey Knight's Fluff Refuge from the Storm. I know you're all excited about it, so let's get right into it, shall we? A Refuge from the Storm in Malkador's absence, the Emperor had prepared a concealed fortress monastery on the moon of Titan. Hidden under layers of rock and shrouded by powerful technologies, the structure had eluded the discovery by the traitors. Their armies focused on Terra, where the fate of the Imperium was unfolding. After departing the Emperor's palace, Malkador charge, charges partway. What? Malkador's charges parted way. I got you. Let's try that again. After departing the Emperor's palace, Malkador's charges parted ways. The four human lords created the framework for the Inquisition, tasked with rooting out heresy from within the Imperium. Malkador took the eight space marines to the fortress where he set about laying the foundations of a new order of space marines. Everything had been prepared for the coming of the Sigilet and the Battle Brothers. An army of servitors maintained the fortress, while Cairo vaults hidden in the core contained vast stocks of gene seed. Hundreds of thousands of recruits had also been gathered from the worlds of the Imperium. These would become the raw material that Malkador would fashion into the Grey Knight's Space Marine chapter. Malkador's servants had chosen each of these recruits carefully. The recruits' minds deeply probed to see if they bore even the slightest hint of corruption. The recruits were also chosen for their latent psychic gifts, so that once human flesh was implanted with space marine organs, they would grow into potent psychers with a unique control over their abilities. To find so many suitable specimens, Malkador's servants had searched the millions of planets of the Imperium, taking aspirants from the seed worlds of loyalist legions, as well as from the ranks of the Imperial Army. Some were even taken from primitive worlds newly restored to the Imperium, their hardy people ignorant of the Sky War that brought them to Titan, but willing to do so as the gods demanded. For those first days, Malkador guided the eight in the formation of the Grey Knights, overseeing the awakening of the Great Civitel and its chapter. However, events were coming to a close on Terra, and the traitor armies gathered for a final blow against the Imperial Palace. Malkador was summoned back to the Imperial side. Before he departed, the Sigilet selected Janus from the eight to continue the work he had begun. So it was that Janus became the first Supreme Grand Master of the Grey Knights. Malkador's final act on Titan was to weave a complex ward about the moon to shield it from the mayhem raging across the galaxy. Whereas before the Sigilet's artifice had merely hidden the fortress from detection, now they were concealed the entire planet, wrapping Titan in a bubble of reality. Malkador sent it into the warp, where it would ride out the final battle for the Imperium. His rites complete, the Sigilet returned to Terra. So let me take a brief second here. As I... Wow, that revealed a lot of information. Let's sum that up. First... The Grey Knights were created before the assault on Terra. So you might think of them as a, as a first founding chapter almost, um, since they were created definitely before uh, the um, Codex Astartes came out and before chapters even existed. So 
What else would you call them other than a first founding? No, then they didn't have a Primarch, but... Well, actually, they had all the Primarchs because they had all the gene seeds. So who knows? Second, uh, Malkador created the first rights for the selection of them. Yeah, and the and, and all of the uh, yeah, all, and even oversaw the training of the original eight uh, gray knights, or that that were supposed to train the rest, and that was taking place during the Battle of Titan. I'm uh, not Battle of Titan. During the Battle of Terra, he was on Titan training the gray knights, and then appointed Janus. Uh, to oversee them the rest of the way. But pretty much he had created the entire training regimen and selection process. And then Janus took over from where, basically picked up where he left off, which is interesting. It's also interesting to note that first it was shielded by, and this is all being shielded by the sigillet. It's not giant Geller machines with enough power to uh, place a planet in the warp, which a lot of people found interesting, okay? Because basically that's how it was originally described, I believed, in one of the in one of the previous codexes or something. They said basically they had huge Geller machines that transported the entire moon of Titan into the warp for as long as it took for them to train the Grey Knights. Now, of course, they said if that technology existed then, then we could have that technology now, and all types of crazy things could be popping out of the warp in the future. Apparently, that's not true. The Sigillet, his ward, placed the entire moon in the warp. He did it. So that then gives you the concept of what level of psyker the Sigillet was for him to obviously an Alpha Plus Psyker, to transport an entire moon of Titan into the warp. Even after he died, apparently, because he went back to the Battle of Terra and he didn't survive that. Well, actually, we don't know. He was just sitting into the in the Golden Throne and turned into a pile of dust. Does that mean he died? Well, obviously, you could play with that any way you want. Or did he just go into the warp? Or who the hell knows what happens when you sit on the golden throne until you turn into a pile of dust? Uh, I don't know. But since Titan obviously didn't come back until after the Battle of Terra, and the ward was still maintained, so either it was a self-maintaining ward in which the Sigillet didn't need to be there, or he continued to maintain it, and he's still out there somewhere. Interesting. This also leads to another question. The Sigillet apparently had his own office in in the government, in the administratum, because they said the Sigillet's servants scoured millions, millions of worlds in the Imperium and the Imperial Army and found hundreds, a hundred plus thousand uh, recruits, the original recruits for the Grey Knights. And they did this all during the Horus Heresy or before, for all we know. I'm assuming that took quite some time. That was not something that was done in a few months. But even then, to scour a million planets for these people gives you an idea about how large the office of the Sigillet must have been. So what happened to these servants of the Sigillet afterwards? Is a question. And what office was it? I have no idea. I will leave other people to speculate on these aspects of fluff. Could they pop up later in the future? Did they become uh, the staff of the Inquisition? The original staff of the Inquisition on all of these millions of planets and searchers, and obviously these were intelligent gathering assets. So maybe those four lords who became the first, uh, and I'm going to assume that the Sigillet would have really been the first Inquisitor. And then he selected these four lords, who we don't know where they are yet, but that would have been the apparatus of the Inquisition that was created by the Sigillet to find probably the first 100,000 
aspirants for the Grey Knights. Just my guess from reading this. Next time, we'll go on to part five from the edge of darkness. Until then, keep thinking about what the hell's going on there. Bye.